Now let's take a look at the Furious FPV True D Diversity Module. And the most obvious difference between the True D module and the LaForge, which we looked at in the previous video, is that it is just a single piece. There's not two modules that you have to install on the left and the right side of your goggle. It's just wholly self-contained. Both receivers are stacked, they're sandwiched, uh, and they come, just as you see them here, with the injection molded door already on and ready to install in your goggle. And when I did the LaForge install, because I wanted a nice clean internal install, with this diversity wire running through the inside of the goggles, I had to crack the goggles open and I had to do a little surgery. And many, many people out there are not going to feel comfortable opening up their $450 goggles or maybe only $350, all right? You're not going to feel comfortable doing that. For you, the installation of the True D is just this simple. There we go. Just push it in and there you go. Just line up the pins and push it in just like when you installed your next wave module when you first got your goggles, just like that. And then we'll just turn it on and there we go. Good to go. So I think for many people, the form factor of the LaForge where you've got two modules, one on the left, one on the right, is gonna be a deal breaker. And, and you're gonna be looking exclusively at modules like the True D the two pineapples and the real ACC, which combine both diversity receivers into one and simply drop right in. Continuing to look at the form factor, you can see that if we look at the LaForge here versus the True D, you can see that the LaForge does have a cleaner look. It protrudes less, and that's just because it's less thick. It, th this has two boards and, and the LaForge only has one. So that's it's a little bit less of a clean and sort of OEM professional look. Uh, how much that matters to you uh, and how much that balances out with all of the other factors is something that only you can decide, but it definitely is something that stands out to me. The Trudy and uh, indeed the other similar modules, the uh, the two pineapples and the real ACC, also put the two antennas right next to each other. So if we put these antennas on, first of all, you can see I do need a 45 degree adapter or, or some other way of standing off the uh, the patch antenna here. If you're going to use the common approach of a patch and a clover leaf, you're going to need some way to get it away from the goggles because they'll interfere with each other. I don't mean interfere electrically. I mean interfere like physically. You can't you just can't fit it. You can't fit it on there. And there they are together. And that's fine. I do think when I'm wearing the True D, I do notice slightly that there's more weight on one side than the other side, whereas the little forge is a little more balanced. Uh, I, again, you would have to decide for yourself how much you think that's going to matter. It's really a minor thing, but I think it is noticeable and it is there. I don't feel like having these two antennas this close together is going to have any effect on the RF performance. And I am I am an RF professional in, in my day job, so I'm a little bit qualified to make that call. Uh, they're far enough apart that they're not going to be within each other's near field, uh, if you know what that means. And, and so they should be reasonably independent. Okay, so now we've taken the antennas off again, and I'm going to take you through the menu. Right now we're on the screensaver, which shows the signal strength for the two antennas, the channel that we're on, the frequency number, and the status of the, of the signal. In this case, it's saying low signal because I haven't got my transmitter turned on yet. And it gives you call sign, which in this case is set to furious. That's the default. We've got a jog dial here instead of the three button approach used by the LaForge V2. And this is the same as used by the LaForge V1. Uh, I have to say that between them, I do prefer the three button approach. Pushing the dial in to click it can be a little bit hard sometimes. And sometimes you accidentally push it up or down or you don't quite click it. And having just three separate buttons to click is, is I think preferable. If I push the button one time, you can see here, the menu is similar to the LaForge. Instead of favorites, we have the working channel. And if we click one time to go to the working channel, this is similar to the LaForge favorites, except the LaForge has 40 favorites, which probably more than most people are gonna need. Whereas the working channel on the True D is only eight. There are more differences between the working channel on the True D and the favorites on the LaForge that really deserve to be mentioned. The working channel set is a, a cue, basically. It, you can't set a given channel to a given position. So you can see here, I've got the first one is band F airwave three, and then we've got airwave one, which is 5740. So it goes 5780, 5740, 
5860, which is a little weird, like why do they go out of order? And the reason is that they're added to the working channel set. So this is position one, two, three, four, etc. They're added in basically f f just the order that you add them. So the first one I added to the working channel set was 5780, right? And then the next one I added was 5740. Well, I'd really like 5740 to be in position one. There's no way to do that. There's also no way to remove them. You can't take these channels out. You can overwrite them with another channel, but there's no way to just take it out. So if you really wanted to get a specific set of channels in a specific order, what you would need to do first is overwrite all these channels with just garbage channels that you don't really want. And then, so you'd need to add them until you got to channel eight, and then you would add them in in the order you wanted, position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is, to say the least, it's it's not good. Also, you always have eight working channels. So if you wanted to, for example, have uh, 5740, 5800, 5860, just the three main fat shark channels, well, you can't do that. And so anytime you cycle through the channels, you're not gonna roll over like you do on the LaForge to, to back, back to the beginning. You're gonna have to go through, if you had three channels you wanted, you'd have to just cycle through five channels you didn't want before you got back around to the beginning again. Now I've talked with the folks over at Furious and they tell me that this is something that they're very aware that this is a place where LaForge really has them beat. And it's not like that's a hard feature to program in. They assure me that this will be in V2 of the True D, but they cannot give me a date on when that will happen. And so I feel like that's not something that you should really take into consideration in your buying decision as, as you're deciding which of these modules to get. You got to take this as it is and because you just don't know when the next one's going to come out. Manual mode works very similar to the LaForge, which I already showed you. We can step through the channels as so. Auto search is similar to the spectate mode I showed you in LaForge where it scans through the band looking for a strong channel to lock onto. And this can be used to find your own channel and it can also be used to find other people to spectate. Now, I, in order to really show you auto search, I'm gonna need to turn a device on. So let me go ahead and do that. And while I'm doing that, I'll turn the band scanner on. Here we are watching the band scanner and I've got my video transmitter on and it's showing me that the best channel is C35732. So we can see here that the True D has the same issue that LaForge has where it locks on to a channel slightly below. It basically, it, by the time it gets to 5732, it feels that the channel is high enough to count and it doesn't keep going and notice that I'm actually on 5740. If we go to auto search, let's see how it does. Here we are scanning. Scanning the bands, and again, we locked on to 5695, so I'm on 5740, that's not correct. And notice here we are, it's showing now that we're on 5695. Let's try that again, auto search, 5732, keep going. Seek, see, there we go, we found 5740. So n neither the LaForge nor the True D are perfect at locking on to the exact channel you're on. But it's, it's hard to be too uh, critical of that when you're only five or eight megahertz off. You know, the difference in the channel strength is, is very small. Uh, so, so you just have to accept that that uh, auto search in the band scanner won't exactly give you the right channel in, for either of these devices. They'll get you close though. If we take a look at the setup menu, and I gotta be a little quick about this because it keeps jumping back to the screensaver pretty quickly. It may be good for the field, but it's not great for doing demonstrations. You can calibrate RSSI, which is something you need to do one time when you first get it so that it's able to switch the diversity correctly. And there are instructions for that online, so uh, I won't uh, take you through that. Um, you can go through the channels either in channel order, in which case it'll go band F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then band B, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or it'll go through in frequency order, in which case it'll just go sequentially by numerical frequency number, your pick, channel or frequency. You can change your call sign, that's for the screensaver, and that's it. There are no options here in the setup menu for the video transmitter like we saw in the LaForge because the Furious obviously doesn't have a video transmitter that they sell to go with it. Just to round out this review, uh, the adding channels to the working channel and setting the channel that will power up 
works just like it does in the LaForge. And I hate to assume that everybody's watching all of these videos, but I also kind of hate to be redundant and say the same thing 10 times when it's common between them. So hopefully you'll watch all the videos. <laughs> but if you want to uh, set the channel that you power up on, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to that channel, here, F1, and you're gonna hold down the button for two seconds and it'll save that channel. Look familiar? And now every time we power up, we will power up on that exact channel. To add a channel to the working channel set, we get to that channel, however we get there, manual mode, by auto searching, or in the band scanner. We get to that channel, I'll do it with the manual mode, and we'll do that, let's say E band number five. And we'll just hold down the button, and it saves that channel, and it adds it to the working channel set as well. Another distinction between the TrueD and the LaForge is that the LaForge makes a distinction between saving your startup channel and adding a channel to the favorites. With the LaForge, you do a sort of a second and a half press to add to favorites and a full two second press to set the startup channel. With the TrueD, it doesn't seem to make a distinction between them. Every time you save a channel, it sets that channel as your startup channel and adds it to the working channel set. So for example, if you were working with a copter, let's say you were working with a copter and it was on E7, but that's not normally a channel you use. You might want to set your goggles to power up on E7, but not add it to the working channel set. Just temporarily set them to power up on that so you stay on that channel so you're done working with the copter. With the TrueD, it doesn't seem like there's any way to do that. If you want the goggles to power up on a channel, the only way to do that is to add it to the working channel set. And since the TrueD functionality for adding and removing channels to the working set is very, very rudimentary, that actually could mess things up. Let's say you've gone to the trouble of setting up your working channel set exactly how you want it, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And then you need to temporarily set your goggles to power up on a different channel. Well, you're gonna mess that up when you do that, is you're gonna have to add it to the working channel set and then you mess the whole thing up and the only way to get it back is to clear it out and start over from scratch. So I'm really looking forward to the next version of the TrueD software where they add better functionality similar to the LaForge for working with that. And if it sounds like I'm making too big a deal out of this, I submit that I'm not because at the end of the day, the ability to manage your channel set is really one of the major features that these modules bring to the table, right? You've got 40 channels to choose from and nobody wants to be sitting there going beep, 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 beep looking for their channel. So the ability to easily set up the channels that you're gonna use and then flip between them is a big deal. Obviously, other things are a big deal too, like RF performance and price and so on and so on. But I don't think I'm making too big a deal out of this. This is the single biggest thing you will do on your day-to-day -day interactions with this module is switch between channels and pick which channels you're gonna be on. So the fact that the, the TrueD's functionality is, is not quite up to snuff is uh, is not just a little quibble that I'm picking. I, I do think it's as big a deal as I'm making it out to be. Oh, by the way, speaking of going beep, 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 uh, the, the TrueD does not let you use, see, nothing's happening. It does not let you use the channel buttons on top of the goggle. Uh, that is something that, as far as I know, only the LaForge V2 does. Although when I get to the other ones, maybe I'll find out that they do it too. I think there's one other out there that's done it but it's not the true D. The true D, these buttons don't do anything. So if you wanna switch channels, you need to go like that. And that's gonna do it for this initial look at the Furious FPV True D diversity module. But we're not done here. We've got range testing between all the modules. We've got reviews of the other modules, the real ACC, the clear view, the two pineapples, and anything else I can get my hands on. So we're not done here. There's a lot more coming. Uh, hope you're looking forward to it. I know I am happy flying.